everybody, welcome to their GMG Review. Today I'm taking a look at the Kill Team 2019 Annual. Um, one of the big specialist game annuals that we're kind of rounding the year off right now with from Games Workshop to go along with the Warcry Annual. Uh, chapter Proof 2019 and all the other various sort of roundup documents that are uh, are coming out. So this is a beast of an annual. This is 200 pages. It, it is a massive book of a whole bunch of stuff, actually. It, it kind of codifies a bunch of add-ons, uh, redoes all the point values, much like um, the 40k uh, uh, chapter approved has redone the point values for the game. All the point values have been reevaluated in here, the Death Watch, Militarum, like ev everybody's gotten a look. There are several new warbands, so um, the Crute Mercenaries and the Sisters of Battle are in here, the, the, the Sororitas, and also the Demons, so some Demon Kill teams. And then finally, um, it basically puts together in one place most of the stuff that was released online um, as free PDFs or through various other publications like White Dwarf. So if you're looking to get everything that came out this year, almost since Elites came out, um, and actually some stuff from Elites as well that's been redone uh, data sheet wise in one place, the Kill Team 29 Annual puts it all together and it is a, it is a chunky document. So I, I paid 40 bucks Canadian for this. And it's a it's a big beast of a book. Like there's a ton in here. Now there's some new stuff too um, for the three ways to play: open play, narrative play, and match play. I'm gonna crush the spine on this, so I hope I don't offend anybody. Um, but I will say it every time because if I don't, like people have actually started saying, you don't have to say it every time. But if I know that if I don't say it every time, someone's gonna <laughs> yell at me in the comments again. Um, you do get a bunch of new stuff. So for open play, for instance, you get the way to design your own specialism, which I think is cool because not every you know hero, anti-hero, kill team member fits into the box of you know one of the current specialisms. So being able to mix and match is pretty cool. For narrative play, a whole bunch of new scenarios, and for match play, um, some new scenarios as well as um, some generic sort of like match play mission cleanup definitions and stuff too. And we have the point values, new data sheets. So again, we have the crew mercs, the chaos demons, the heretic astartes, chaos space brain list got redone. Um, the astartes stuff, adding in the incursor, eliminator, infiltrator, reaver, intercessor, and phobos armor, um, and lieutenant, strain phobos armor, uh, and then the sorita stuff, who include the sisters of battle, the repentia, the fl uh, flagellants. And then the Canonists and the Superiors, Commanders. Uh, kill teams are from Blackstone Fortress, so just all of the data sheets for all the characters from the original, plus the new expansion, Servants of the Abyss. Same thing. How to use the dreaded Amble and Kill Team. <laughs> so the Amble and the Bone River Infestation as well. And then a reprint of all the tactics and psychic powers. So this last part is really important because all of this stuff at the end here is the stuff that came out in the old starter sets as cards. They've just codified it and put it all in one place. So if you were on the hunt for that stuff, if you're trying to get a starter set that was out of print, you don't have to worry. It's all here. It's also been revised in the FAQs and updates and stuff too. So like I said, lots of good stuff in, um, in one spot. I'm not going to go blow by blow like for you Kill Team fans. I'll probably look at the Kill Teams that I, that I play personally because I'll have some insight in them. So I'm probably going to look at Astartes, Death Watch, and Death Guard. Um, and maybe the, uh, what's it called? The, um, the Nemesis Mechanicus as well, just to give like a brief gloss over what, what's new and what's changed. Um, but for all of them, I, I can't deep dive in every single one. This would take forever. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do a greatest hits play by play of what's new in this book. So let's start with the um, the making your own doctrines, uh, making your own sort of like storyline doctrines. Uh, they give a great example here on how to do it, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to pick some core abilities, the ones that unlock the different levels, uh, and then on top of that, picking a level one, level two, and level three um, trait, so tactic that you get as well. So just like with every specialism, you're going to get uh, the ability to basically um, add abilities to people as they level up, and of course you can pay points for leveled specialists if you want to too as well in open play. Um, but you get a whole bunch of different ones to, to try out. And what's cool is they are given here by class, so like heavy, whatever. But what you do in this case is you actually just, and they're actually just the generic ones typically by that class. You just give your specialism a new name and then cherry pick whichever you want. So if you want to have um, a, a leader, a veteran, and a zealot tactic all together, you can. And the rabble rouser, for instance, here, the flash kit, the rabble rouser specialism, that's what you have. You have uh, reassuring as your trait. And then your level two trait is exultant. Your level three is mentor. And finally, you're uh, taking lead by example, well drilled, and terrifying rampage as your as your three abilities. So it just kind of lets you mix and match. This is just for open play, so you don't have to worry about it being balanced. Just pick what you like, um, and it's just kind of giving you permission to carte blanche melange from all of the basic core ones. So um, there's nothing really new here because either just the different level leader tech. It's, it's leader combat comms demo heavy medic uh, sniper scout veteran and zealot. And tactics, they're the same as in the rulebook. 
with any updates for Epic Games if they're in there. Um, but then your ability lists, all the tier one abilities. So if you were level one, you could take resourceful, get a command point, you could get expert fighter, take an attack. And these are just the same, again, options lists fr from the current attached specialisms, but just allowing you to mix and match them. So there's not really anything new here um, uh, that I noticed. Uh, some of them are, are picked from some of the, um, the commander specialisms and stuff. So like Exultant, for instance, opponents must reroll modified heroes of six. For models uh, from their kill team within three inches of this model, as long as it's not shaken, because he's just like cheering about being awesome. Um, some of these are cherry picked from some of the specialisms that aren't the core ones. Uh, the level three ones, there's a huge list, like triage expert. If this model in your kill team is not out of action at the end of the battle, and you roll a dead result on a d6 and a four plus, you reply convalescence instead, because he saves the person that dies. So cool for campaigns and stuff. <laughs> Survivor, just plus one save. <laughs> Like, why not? Here's my two plus save intercessor sergeant or whatever. Battle scarred, enemy models within, uh, suffer minus one leadership within six, and when it's locked, not shaken, as long as it's not shaped, shaken. And nerves of steel, uh, real fail rolls to hit for firing Overwatch. Um, and then you get a nice little photocopyable sheet here for making up your own, um, uh, like, specialism, basically. So the name, your description of what it is, uh, the three tactics it gets, and its level abilities, basically, for when it's levels one, two, three, and four. That's cool. I mean, it's really, you could easily have come up with this on your own, um, but it's basically just outlining a f or, or laying out a format for you to make your own specialisms for open play. I, it, it's funny because it's, it's really, it's not all new information, I guess is what I'm saying, but it's kind of just giving you a format and permission to do it when you're playing your, for funsies games with your friends. Narrative play, war stories, tons of new scenarios. So Break Their Will, Tomb of Saints, The Cull. <laughs> I, just, I just imagine this one is... It's just, it's Morty and Rick going to the Purge planet. <laughs> I really got my, I really filled up my appetite for this rather quickly. <laughs> or I lost my appetite for this fast. Whatever, it's Mark for Destruction, blowing stuff up. Finery targets, revive the shrine. Virulent vectors. I wonder if they're ever gonna run into names for kill team missions. <laughs> like, some of them are getting real rhymy. Like, virulent vectors, where death card are being played. Um, and some of these are keyed to specific factions. So for instance, this is a Mechanicus one, this is a Mechanicus one, uh, Death Guard, Thousand Sons. And it's just kind of design, you can see here with the faction symbols, to give your, your factions all their own unique kind of like narrative play missions. I like Cruel Intent for the Drukhari. I wonder if it's got, um, <laughs> what's her name? Sarah Michelle Geller in it, Cruel Intentions. It's uh, the Witch Leader, Sarah Michelle Geller. Uh, mind Shackle Abduction, the Necron ones, you, you brainwash them with a brain bug and then try and kidnap them. Dumb Megapire for the Orcs and Reckon Spree. Uh, infestation for the Tyranids, Light of the Beacons for the Empire, sorry, Town Empire. Uh, Gene Stealer Cults, Gene Stealer Cults, and there it is. So just some cool sort of like, anyone can play against as long as one of these sort of like antagonist factions are involved. And there's Marine ones. Uh, is that a Death Watch one? Yeah, it's a Death Watch one. Astral Terran one. And then match play, the force of war. Uh, and this is just sort of running down how match play goes again and giving us a whole bunch of new match play missions um, and just some revised versions of some old ones too. So we have uh, two and four player formats for most of these because all the match play missions are designed to be fairly flexible in that regard. Uh, Death in the Darkness. Um, these feel like they, uh, they're not quite the the sub uh, was it the submission ones from like the Adepticon and the the ITC pack, but they're pretty close. They're they're fairly fairly uh, symmetrical in that regard. Strike of the heart, best of the best. Data wipe, annihilation protocols, uh, and these are um, uh, again uh, based on different factions. So the Death in the Darkness is Astartes. Uh, as is Grudge Match, at least um, one of the players is going to be Astartes. Uh, Strike at the Heart is Death Watch, Militarum for Best of the Best. Mechanicus, Mechanicus, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, Drukhari, Necrons, Orcs, Orcs, Tyranids, Townfire, Gene Stealer Cuts, Gene Stealer Cuts. Funny the sisters didn't get one. Um, but they're all basically sort of designed to be themed around one of those players. If you're playing a campaign, you can choose to play this mission instead of disrupt supply lines, as long as someone's Gene Stealer Cult. And again, you could just use them basically if you wanted for match play games too. They don't have to be, uh, you know, like key to those, those, those people. Uh, but they're giving you an option basically for swapping them out if you're playing them in a campaign. And then all the collated point values. And holy moly, again, this is a, if you, uh, this is a madness amount of stuff. <laughs> it's everything. They did everything. So you have all your all your Space Marine stuff, Astarte stuff, Death Watch Point values, 
Um, and all of this is including any of the changes. So for instance, all the changes to the sidearms. So like you're paying four points extra for a storm bolter, two for combi plasmas. You're paying the, the special ammo tax on everything for like the um, the commanders and elites. Uh, and then what's the what's the basic add-on? Uh, for storm bolters for non, is there one in here? No, it's bolt guns are zero, bolt rifles are two, auto bolt rifles are two, bolt carbines are two, frag cannons are five, combi plasma, combi melter are three and four. Is there a storm bolter in here? There should be. No, I guess not. I thought the basic watch vet could take a storm bolter, but I guess they can't in, in this game. They can only take it in uh, in not um, much more call it in not uh, kill team games. Grey Knights again didn't notice any real changes. Now I do like that the commanders and the um, the basic dudes have different values now though, because I think it's commanders should definitely make more for a storm bolter because they're hitting on twos, which is amazing. Militarum, Mechanicus. Uh, it's weird. Oh, and then kill team commanders. Eisenhorn's in there as a commander because he'll just command anybody because Eisenhorn will just show up and take over no matter who he is, which I think is great. Uh, so things really changed here. It's like Karen Infiltrators, Rust Stalkers are 14. I think they're still about the same. Blades and Razors are all free. Core Claws are one. So yeah, 15 each. Custodies, same as before. Two-man team, if you take a Alaris Custodian and a Custodian Guard, all the weapons are zero. Uh, unless you're taking a Misericordia for a Shield Captain, and it's two because he hits better. And then same with a Storm Shield, it's free unless you're taking a Shield Captain. <laughs> so you're either having three or you're having two. You basically have two builds still for the Custodies, but they get whatever weapons you want, which I think is funny. I think the Golden Boys are still just, you couldn't really match their point bias because you couldn't really make a kill team otherwise. And the sisters. Oh, it's fun because I'm painting my sisters now. This is kill teams where I wanted to, to try them out first because I can just enjoy painting them and do it kind of slowly and then still play some games. And they're not too bad. Battle sisters are nine. It's not far off from 40k really. Battle sisters are nine. Gunners are ten. Superiors are ten. Repentions are thirteen. Do the repentions pay for their eviscerators? Nope. So that's built in. Um, chain swords are free. The blast blade is six. The power swords one. Cannons is it's two. So yeah, you're, you're basically looking at nine points each. You could have ten sisters. Um, if you take a superior, though, you're going to start to run out of points. So you could probably take a full squad, because it would be two gunners and a sister superior is 30, and then seven more sisters is seven times nine, which is 63. So 63 and 30 is 93. So you'd have seven points left to buy their stuff. They, the plastic squad has a storm bolter, which is two. And then a flamer, which is three, so five. And the superior has a chainsaw, which is free. And I think a plasma pistol, maybe? I can't remember the model has. Is it? It's, it'd be one. So either way, it'd be, it'd be basically free. Uh, and if I take the simulacrum, it'd be five more. So basically, I wouldn't be able to get the flag, I don't think. Because you're looking at two for the storm bolter, and the flamer is five. I don't have two, two extra points to spend, basically, which means I wouldn't get the simulacrum imperialis. No way, no how. Can't quite fit it in. You need to be three points cheaper. So I have to cut something, basically, like the flamer. Cut the flamer and I can still take it. That's cool. Uh, Heretic Astartes. Uh, I don't remember enough about my Night Lords to be able to give really any commentary on that. Death Guard. Blightlord Terminators. Ooh, they look like they might have gone down. Death Shroud did not go down. <laughs> Plague Rangers are still 14. Gunners are 15. Champions are 15. Fighters are 15. Because usually I used to take, it was eight pox walkers, which is still 24, and then four marines, which, so 24, four marines is still 60. Sorry, uh, it's a gunner, two fighters, and a champion, which is 60. So 60 and 24 is 84. And can I still fit the rest? I want my power fist and sergeant. So I've got 84. So four, at least I can spend 16. So four... He's got a fourth power fist. He had a plasma pistol, which is right, even a plasma gun. Uh, one for plasma pistol, so five. And then he had a blight launcher. Blight launcher is three, so eight. So I'm halfway there. And then my two melee weapons are a foil of corruption, so eight, 12 with the foil of corruption. And then the big old axe, the great plate cleaner, is four, so 16. So that's exactly right. Yeah, it's exactly, exactly the same as before. Exactly 100. Doesn't look like my build changed at all. It's exactly the same point value. Chaos Demons are pretty cool, though. Oh, Plague Bears are so cool. I have a bunch of Plague Bears and stuff, too, from um, 
from Mordheim that could easily just drop in there. They're pretty neat. Plague Bears are seven each. Hornblower, Icon, and Plague Ridden. So you get your champions and stuff. No! You can't take Nurglings. Weird. I guess they'd have too many wounds. It'd be too like hard to too hard to like balance taking swarms and stuff. Because they'd be a huge tar pit. Necrons and Harlequins. Again, I haven't played my Necrons in so long, I couldn't really give any accurate commentary or my Tau even. Crude! Oh my gosh, how many crude can you get? You can get a lot of crude. There's six points each. And there's no shaper. I thought for sure they'd put the shaper in. Is he not even in here as a commander? What? No shaper? <gasps> how am I going to use my Angor proc model? Which I still have like two or three of somewhere. <laughs> There's a bunch of Angor procs in a box from a games day long, long ago. That sucks. There's no shaper. Why would they not put the shaper in? Six points each, six for crude hounds. So like 60 for 10, basically, if you want to take a full squad of crude. There's nothing for any of the weapons. So 60, you could do 87, which means two crude hounds and 99. So you have two crew downs, a crew rider with a crew dox, and 10 crew. You have 13 models for 99 points. I don't know how I feel about there not being a shaper though. You should be able to have a shaper. I guess I haven't looked at the stats yet. Maybe there, maybe there is one in here. Cults, Blackstone Fortress. How many points is Shadow Guide? She's only 30 points. She's so killy in that in, in actual like um, in actual uh, what should call it? Uh, Blackstone Fortress. It's weird that she's only 30 points in 40k. Like I feel like she should be more. She should be like this giant amazing killing machine. Servants of the Abyss. Oh, I do like the Chaos Ogre. And I could use my Servants. I could actually do a kill team of my Servants of the Abyss. Maybe I'll get Owen to play them in my um, in my first game against my sisters, and we'll do some like cool cultist versus sisters stuff, because that Chaos Ogre is awesome. He's 50 points. And the Beastmen are super cool, too. It's such a cool collection of miniatures. I like that Malix is, Malix is still 125 points. He's still a giant killing machine. All right, and then data sheets. Let's take a look at the data sheets of the Crute Mercs. What kind of what kind of stuff we're talking? Oh, that's oh I forgot to pull it dice. I should have done dice. So I can do my crew name like Dora Yoga <laughs> or Orak Ek Gota. <laughs> I always have too much fun doing that. Uh, missions you can be forward scouts or retrieval crew. That's cool. Uh, your background, your evolutionary path, shock troops, exiles, or a life debt. You're trying to work off the debt for your employers and your squad. Your squad quick. Your instinct. Flesh harvest. Eat as many people as you can. Go for the throat. Kill important enemy fighters. Specialist demeanors. You can get cautious killer or a seasoned mercenary. All right, what kind of tactics do we have here? Unfettered aggression. Use this tactic uh, when your chosen model from your kill team fights in the fight phase. End of the phase, plus one attack. So you bought an attack for a command point. That's not bad. Primal savagery. Use this tactic at the end of your fight phase. Pick a Crudox rider from your kill team that's within one. They can fight again. Oof. I haven't seen stats for the Crudox yet, but if he's, if he's not bad, then fight twice for one CP is pretty amazing. That's the end of the fight phase. Prestigious Trophy, uh, uses tactic when a crew carnivore from your kill team takes on enemy leader uh, in the fight phase. The crew carnivore automatically passes nerve test and the end of the battle. I don't know if that's great. I mean, I guess you do the, you do the old uh, the predator thing, you pull his spine out, and now you're, just, you're, you're super brave for the rest of the game. That's cool for one. I mean, it's not terrible. Crew tactic, uh, Hyper Evolution, uses tactic when a model from your kill team takes an enemy model out of action in the fight phase and is not within one inch. Of an enemy model, this model may not move in the consolidate step. Add one of their move and strength to the end of the battle because you start to eat, you eat them and, and suck with their power. Agile Hunter, uh, for one, uses tactic when a model from your kill team moves in the movement phase. This model can leap over gaps less than four inches across instead of less than two. That's kind of neat. You can cross a big gap from a rooftop. And then Tearing Jaws uses this tactic before making an injury roll for a model whose wounds reduce to zero by a crude hound. Roll two dice and pick the highest. That's really cool, actually. And you finish somebody off with a crude hound, and then for a CP, you just roll two, pick the highest. It basically makes your damage two. Same as if you are hit him with a damage two attack. And their stats the same as in 40k. Crew rifles are basically just little bolters. Mm, yeah, strength four, rapid fire one, 24 inch. Seven inch move, they're fast as hell. And three plus weapon skills, not bad. But they're still just made out of paper, man. Strength up is three. You're going to get ten of them, I guess, for 99. Plus two crude hounds, which are just two attack crude, basically. And you have a maximum of four, and then, oh, uh, you get one crew ox rider. Is he good? Strength six, four wounds, two attacks. Fight twice, give him a combat for three attacks. Agile Brute adds six to this model's move characteristic in the movement phase, in which it advances instead of rolling a dice. You just always, you always run six. You go 13 all the time. That could be cool for contesting an objective. Strength six with three attacks on threes. I mean, you might crush somebody if you get to fight twice. 
Especially if you duff them up with the first one for one. That's cheap. It's one CP. That's not bad. But you're only getting one of those street rocks because they're they're max one. And they're super durable for four wounds. I mean, they've got toughest five four wounds. They have no save. They save six plus. Demons. I don't care about these as much. <laughs> I'll be honest. Now that I know that I can't take like lesser demons, like um, like smaller horrors and like the nerglings and stuff, I, it's just not that interesting. I'm not going to bother looking at it that much. The Chaos Space Moons have changed. They replace your bulk gun with a chainsword, have a Chaos Icon, take a mark. One Marine Gunner in your kills, you can take a bolt gun, flame or melt gun. Oh, they've just changed it to match the uh, the new plastic box, that's what they've done. But you still can have the chain gun. Weird. One gunner can have a bolt gun with a heavy bolt or auto cannon or missile launcher. Spine champion can have a chain sword, chain axe, power sword, power mall. You can't take the chain gun. Weird. I figured for sure they'd add that in. They didn't. That sucks. I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, it's a really good gun for this level of game, but like, you're, it's what your kit makes now. I thought that, that doesn't make any sense. Oh well, that's too bad. A start use tactic outflank uses tactic in the movement phase. Choose a model from your kill team that's uh, set up in reserve and set up more than one from uh, edge of the battlefield, more than five from any enemy models. So you can just come to a side. So reserves can just come in the flank. And cursor eliminators, reavers, same as before. Intercessors, lieutenant, and focus armor. I mean, there might be some changes to the data slates. I'm not really spending that much time looking at it. But it's now reprinted in here. And the sisters. All right, what we got? So kill teams, tactics, blessed bolts. Use tactic when you pick an Adeptus Sorius model from your kill team to shoot with a storm bolter. Change the arm penetration from to minus two and damage two until the end of the battle. Round. Whoa, that's pretty cool. For two CPs, so you, at, at rapid fire range, you have four shots, minus two, damage two. That is amazing. Holy crap, no wonder they, they're spending extra points for storm bolters. Uh, this rating blow. Uh, Repenches in the fight phase, change damage characteristic of their penetrant eviscerator 3 until the end of the fight phase. Damage 3 eviscerators for 1 CP. That's not bad. They got 2 attacks each. Oof. Frenzied Thrashing for a CP. It's for your Argo Flagellants. Uh, add one of the attack characteristics of the model for each enemy model within 1 inch in the fight phase until the end of the phase. You just start spinning around. It's gonna just do the arms thing. Spin my arms if you get in the way, it's your own fault. Uh, and then burn the heretic. Use this tactic when you pick a Sorius model for your kill team to shoot with a flamer. Reroll the dice to determine the number of attacks. That's kind of cool. I mean, no, I guess you can't reroll the, the, the number of attacks actually with a CP in this game, so that's actually worth doing. Lead the Righteous. Uh, Sorius tactic. Can I was in a Canis Aura tactic and Repent Aura tactic, so it's for commanders, so it's not super relevant. Uh, the model gains you get uh, aura for your cannonist as long as the model's not shaken, reroll once for friendly models within six to hit, and then reroll wound rolls of one for repentance within six for one CP for your fervent whipping. <laughs> uh, stat lines are basically the same as in 40k. They're, they're just power armor guards, when basically with a better boost skill. Power armor, power armor, um, what are they called? Uh, uh, stormtroopers. What are they called now? The, the, the Scions. <laughs> Stupid name for stormtroopers. Uh, Shield of Faith, 6 plus Invol. In addition, they can deny the Witch. That's going to be so good against Siege. Models of this ability can deny one Psychic Power. But it's only a D6. But you can still do it. That's, I mean, the fact that every model can resist a Psychic Power. And it's, even if it's only a D6, oof. You always have a chance, basically. Simulacrum Imperialis. Shield of Faith becomes 5 plus uh, instead of 6 within 6 of that model. So she ups their storm, their invulnerable save aura, which is kind of cool. And then you can be leader for the superior, heavy for the gunner, comms, demo, medics, and you get the whole list, basically. Repentia's show the faith still. They can also deny. Zealot, reroll hits for melee weapons when they charge, or war charged, and solace and anguish. Five plus wound shrug. You only have a seven plus save. <laughs> well, what you do is I think you take the Repentia's. They're the ones you stick around the simulacrum. Because anyone with Shield of Faith, because they also have Shield of Faith, and they have a five plus anvil and a five plus shrug. That's that's actually pretty pretty tough, and the and the banner just stays behind them basically, like cheerleading. And they can be leader combat veteran zealot. Now <laughs> the third pension could be in charge. That doesn't make any sense. We sentence you to die fighting with a giant chainsaw. Also, you're in charge. <laughs> that's silly. Uh, Arco Flagellant, seven inch move. Uh, Berserk killing machine. You don't have to turn them on. That's cool. One can be an endurance. You get a you get a champion level guy, basically with three attacks. Still seven plus save. They do not have shield of faith though, so it's just 
a five plus wound strike from Berserk Killing Machine. And then reroll hit rolls for attacks when they charge. And what do they got for their Arco Flails? How are they in this, Arco Flails? Plus in strength, minus one, damage one. D3 attacks for each one. So you're getting two D3 attacks from normal zealots, or sorry, Arco Flagellants, and then three D3 from the Endurant. That's pretty cool. And the Cannonus is basically the same as a 40k Cannonus. Can have all the guns. I wonder if this one can be made legally with the plastic model, unlike the, the, the Codex. Can replace the bullet pistol with a condemned bolt gun, hand flame, or a plasma pistol? Cool. Replace the chainsword with a power sword or bus blade? Cool. If the model did not replace this cha their chainsword with a blade, they could take a or fire no rod. Instead of any of the blood, this can replace the regular with a bolt gun, power sword, frag grenades, crack grenades, and one rod of office. I think that last bullet point makes it... No. No, because you don't have the plasma pistol. <laughs> it still doesn't work. If they did not replace their chain sword, they can take a Brazier of Holy Fire or a Null Rod. I don't think you can do it, because you have to have a sword, Null Rod, or sword, Rod of Office, and Plasma Pistol. And you can't do all three still. <laughs> silly. Ah, it's silly. It is what it is. I mean, the Rod of Office, if you're just using our abilities, adds three, so it's not like a big deal, but it's still silly. And your Repentia Superior, driving forward the sisters. Frosty, 14 million strength, same kind of thing. They're pretty great. And then Blackstone Fortress, for all those of you that have it, want to use it in Kill Team. Most of these are commanders, like Medela's commander. UR is not, though. You can take UR, you, uh, UR in any Mechanicus army. I should start using UR in my Mechanicus armies. Hello, beep boop, I am friend robot, I am not android. <laughs> uh, any can use Amelin, she commander, she's a commander. Grek is a commander, darn it. You can't even take him in Kroot as just like a dude. I was hoping he was just going to be a dude you'd take in crew because he's he's basically a shaper, but he's not a shaper. He's a merc. Uh, Tad's still a commander. Pius Vorn's not though, so you could take her in the Sororitas. Oh, cool! I can use Vorn in my Sororitas army. That's awesome because she's pretty awesome with her Vindictor assault D six five minus one flamer, and that's two six pick the highest for uh, hitting chaos with it. And in melee, it's plus one minus one one damage. Uh, is always a zealot specialist, but doesn't count towards your total number of specialists. Has a 5 plus shrug, 7 plus save, reroll failed hits. This model may not be picked to be affected by any order as part of the voice of command ability. Because she's an advisor. Ryan Rouse, you can still take, not commanders. Locarno is a commander. Uh, Gonfred, can we take him? Cerise can take him, and he is not a commander. Awesome! Oh, he's so good. He's a combat specialist, and he's a special retainer, so he doesn't count towards the maximum number. Hacking advance, unmodified hit rolls of six for Gotrit. Uh, score two hits instead of one. Three plus invol. Ooh, I think we're gonna we're gonna paint Godfrey to go with my warband too. He's pretty great. How many points is he? Oh, it's the back. Godfrey's cool. Uh, Daedalus is a commander. XO10 is a commander, but he's mind locked to. Um, I mean, you could take him, sorry, but he's mind locked. Unless he's an extra tech priest. Oh, Godfrey's so cool. Where's his point values? This is all the extra stuff from the baggies. Oh, and then Thread and Amble. <laughs> he shows up too. Oh, that's cool. He has his own rules for showing up and just like attacking things with the Borrower infestations. Where's the point values for those guys? Oh, they'd be back here, wouldn't they? Be back in the big, the big middle section. How much is Godfrey's? That's what I want to know. Godfrey is 20 points. Oh, he's, he's relatively cheap for what he does. Three wounds, three plus. Three plus invol. Oh, I'm just totally going to paint him. He's really good. He's going, my sisters. Go get him, Godfrey. You're the, you're the Godfrey-iest. And then Tactics and Tank Power. So again, this is just, this is all the cool stuff that was in the cards, updated for the current FAQs. So all the stuff that was in here, that's the Traders, Alchemite Detonation, the Sector Mechanicus one. Um, the Adeptus Study Static Psychological Warfare for Reavers, Jump Pack Assault, Hellfire Shells, Adeptus Strategy. Use attack as soon as your kill team is broken. Get D3 command points. That one's so awesome. Uh, Death Denied, the three, uh, the one that if you die, take a flesh wound for three CPs. That one's really good. On the chapter, two to fight twice. Smoke Grenades, Grab Shoot Descent. Yeah, all that good stuff, including the commander ones. Death Watch, Hellfire Shells, the Beheading. Rival chapters, I like that one where two people have different chapters within two of each other and they reroll hits on one because they're trying to show off. <laughs> Only Death to Zooty ends. All your psychic powers for the Librarius and the Obscuration. 
and on. I'm not going to bother going through all of these. I might just stop on the Death Watch ones and just have a look at them. But there is a whole pile! So if you were looking to... Oh, I have to Come on, Death Guard, where are you at? There you are. Putrid Splatter! <laughs> you teleport strike, Veterans of the Long War, Death March, Cloud of Flies. That one's good for two CPs, attack at the end of the movement phase, pick a model on your kill team until the end of the battle round. Yeah, I know you models can only shoot them if they're, unless they're the closest. Grandfather's Tally, Grandfather's Blessings, so that includes the ones from the core rulebook. Add uh, two plus, add plus one to hit and wound. For two CPs, start of the battle. That's sort of the first battle round, sorry. Uh, three add fly. You control exactly three objectives until the end of the battle round. Add one to your discussing resilient rolls for all um, of your kill team members within three of any of these objectives. I like, I forgot about that one, that's awesome. Leaking brain fluid. You just have to put a pox while for, uh, suffer a flesh wound for the rest of the battle. You don't have to take nerve deaths for that model. <laughs> Their brain fluid starts to leak out. And you're to pain, nerve infestation. Give people mortal wounds when they're standing next to terrain. Revolting stench. Vector of contagion. Yeah, it's nice just to have them all in one place. It, it basically just it compiles everything that was in the cards before. So you have them all. If you didn't have them from some other way. Templars or Extra Sisters ones. Tyranids. You know, RST. Genius that are called. No, it doesn't look like it. looks like the Sisters ones that are in there are the only ones. They didn't add in. I'm going to go to the index just real fast to check. They didn't add extra sisters ones from what was there basically in the core list. No, it looks like they're going to add those as they go. No, sorry to stuff in here. No. But that's it. So there it is. Ends with tactics and psych powers. That's 200 pages of stuff. That's pretty madness on the old core box cover from the previous edition. Um, so yeah, I do like when they do this. It's funny because a, a lot of people have, there's been so many annuals coming out recently. A lot of people have kind of complained that it feels like you're buying a patch. Having, <laughs> having just recently dug out my compilation compendium and first book of the Astronomicon from Rogue Trader, I really appreciate these. Um, cause I realized later on that, that for older games and older systems, when you, when, when they go out of print, basically trying to track down a million articles is way harder than finding one compilation. And I really appreciate these compilations because over time, I'm gonna go back and wanna play Kill Team again at some point. I mean, I've been playing sixth edition Fantasy Skirmish and uh, we just played Warhammer Warbands, which was a, a sixth edition like like combat patrol basically for playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle just this week. And trying to dig out the articles, the rules for those things in was a giant pain. I, they weren't compiled anywhere. They weren't, there was no like, place I could just find that information. Um, but if I want to go find the Space Wolves army list for Rogue Trader, I can just go back and look at the first book of the Astronomicon. And all those White Dwarf articles from one place. Uh, and I've, it's just been on my mind that like, annuals aren't a thing Workshop's done a lot of in the last like 15 or 20 years. And I'm having gone back to the ones that are 30 years old now and seen how useful it is to have all that information like compiled in one spot. I'm happy they're doing these. I'm really happy they're doing these because like, if next year nothing else comes out for Kill Team, I mean, there's going to be stuff coming out for Kill Team, but this now compiles, it's basically the rule book plus this, and I am I have everything from like the that period of time. You know what I mean? It's, well, rule book, elites, commanders, and now this. Although, without the case, the commander data slates are all still in there. You'd still need all three of those things. But you're, you're not you're not trying to surf white dwarf articles basically or try and find all those card packs or you know like d dig out the rules for the sisters or whatever because this does add tons of new content and also compile old content too so i'm happy with it um i'm stoked to paint my sisters i think that's gonna be really cool and then play some games with my older war bands just to give it a go kill team was definitely my game of 2018 it was one of the ones i played the most of and that we really enjoyed just because it was light 40k it was 40k without like the grinding um and it gave me an excuse to paint a bunch of models from different factions that i'd always want to paint so I'm jazzed about this. I'm happy I got it. Uh, and it's going to allow me to get done my, my sisters um, that I hadn't painted yet because I was just looking for a way to get them on the table that wasn't like grinding out 2,000 points to play a game. And I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So I'm also going to, it's going to get me to pop, crack open my expansion for Blackstone too and start painting Godfrey because he's awesome and he fights for the faction. So I enjoyed that look at the Kill Team 2019 annual. Um, I had to actually like wait to get a hands on copy. They sold it really fast. So I had to go to my local store and um, dig to try and find one. Uh, so I could do a review of it, but I hope it was worth the wait. Um, you can also check out my review of the new 30-minute um, missions for uh, for Necromunda that came out in this month's White Dwarf this week. Uh, and they'll be up here in the cards, or you can just go to my channel, it should be up right now. So, big thanks for watching. Till next time, I'm Ash. Have a great day.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.